In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how over a couple of hours last week I made this cyclonic dust extractor collector, and I'm going to be explaining why, even for us DIYers, it's well worth putting something like this together. Now, before I start, for those of you who were expecting week three of my wardrobe build today, I've decided to delay that until next week because I want to show you a big leap forward in progress rather than the small drip fed updates that I've been giving you so far. So the inspiration for this cyclonic dust extractor has, like so often, come from you guys. Week one of the build ended up with me blowing thick clouds of MDF dust out of my improvised workshop. I decided I need to get in control of the MDF dust situation because it was only going to get worse and a few of you sensibly suggested I make myself one of these. So the idea of this is it separates out all of the MDF dust, sawdust, building soot, all that sort of stuff that you vacuum up and rather than depositing it in your vacuum cleaner it puts it in this barrel. And this could be really useful for any of you who have a messy DIY job coming up and you're not quite ready yet to commit to spending that money in upgrading your existing domestic vacuum. Now, on one hand, I've got this cheap shop vac with a big 30 litre capacity that I bought for a video about a year ago. But the vacuum bags, which I always like to use with my vacuum cleaners, are absolutely hopeless. They don't fit properly on the inlet tube. It's almost like they were designed to deter you from ever using them. So I thought with the bag gone and this upgraded HEPA filter that I bought, quite soon after buying the machine, the suction of the vac could only get better and would be perfect for trying to minimize all the MDF dust flying around the workshop. So let's have a quick look at today's toolkit. So there were three things I needed to buy. Firstly, the cyclone itself. Secondly, a barrel to collect the dust in. I went for this 30 litre OIPS barrel from Amazon. A lot of people have warned me against the problem with the barrel collapsing under the strain of the vacuum. I've been using this for a week now and it's absolutely rock solid. But I'll be coming on to that and the dangers of that in a bit. And the most expensive bit of the kit, bizarrely, this six metre vacuum hose. We'll have a look at this in a minute, but this is the connection between your vacuum and the extraction barrel itself, the cyclone. So you need to choose this carefully depending on what connector you have on your existing vacuum. Some of you might tell me today you use the new vacuum hose that you've bought to connect the cyclone to the actual tools themselves. But for me, the original hose that came with my Titan vacuum is the hose that I find most easy to connect to all my power tools. The other tools I've used today are my old Bosch jigsaw with this bayonet blade, great for circular cuts, metallic sharpie pen, adjustable spanner, my 12 volt drill driver and five and a half millimeter drill bit, a slightly aging tube of silicon adhesive and duct tape, and my trusty Stanley ratchet screwdriver. And finally, some non-essential tools for constructing the barrel feet to stop it falling over. Details of all today's tools will be, as usual, in the description below the video. So the barrel cost me 20 quid, but thinking about it, I could have just constructed a box from all of those MDF offcuts from the wardrobe build. The important thing is that you can make it airtight. I'm using this glass because it more or less completely matches the circumference we've got to cut out. With the circumference marked out with my Sharpie pen, I could drill a small hole as an insertion point for my jigsaw and quickly cut out the hole. Giving the rough edges a quick sand. Then it was time to mark the holes for the retaining bolts that came with the cyclone kit and drill these out with a 5.5mm diameter drill bit. The cyclone kit doesn't come with a rubber gasket and it's key the barrel is airtight so I improvised with this multi-purpose EBT plus adhesive sealant and filler which has been open for a while and is going a bit stiff if I'm honest but was perfect for this job. I could then fasten the cyclone tight to the barrel with the nuts and bolts provided giving each a final few turns with my adjustable spanner. And that was it, the cyclone was all ready for action. Now, whilst expensive, I'd say this hose was a good investment. You get what you pay for in life, and this is decent quality made from heavy grade plastic, unlike the hose of my Titan. Also, the six metre length means I can position my vac out of the way at the back of my tented workshop, and similarly position the cyclone extractor conveniently out of the way behind my workbench. To be fair on the cyclone, it did come with a wide array of adapters and Jubilee clips, but I find matching these is always a bit hit and miss, and I had to improvise with a few layers of cloth tape to finally get a really tight seal between the hose and cyclone adapter. I can then connect my vacuum to the cyclone. 
And then there was a similar process with the duct tape to get the adapter ready for my vacuum hose. And then I could remove that hopefully now redundant vacuum bag and give the cyclone extractor its first test. However, with these hoses connected, the barrel was now unstable and needed some sort of a base. So I cut down a piece of decking left over from my summer hot tub decking build to improvise a stand, comprising two 500mm long pieces of the deck. I made two cuts down the centre of each piece with my Owen Jack floorboard saw, chiselled out the notch, and then glued them both together. Screw all that and that. I then fix the stand to the barrel with these easy drive self drilling screws, perfect for this job because of their rubber washers which will maintain the airtight seal inside the barrel. And that was it, the stability problems were resolved. As part of my new MDF dust management strategy at the start of the week I also bought this Urbar plunge saw which, with an additional modification again suggested by one of you in the comments section, has made it even more efficient with the net result that it spews out almost no MDF dust on each cut, particularly when compared to my Evolution circular saw that I had been using to cut the wardrobe carcasses until this week. And this is the sort of dust generated after a couple of hours of using the tool. And the remarkable thing, no dust whatsoever inside the vacuum. The barrel, on the other hand, has collected an impressive amount of MDF dust. That, if I can just stir it around just to show you, is a lot of dust. It looks pretty underwhelming because the barrel's quite deep, but it's a good 70 to 100 mil of depth in the bottom of the barrel. And includes this mystery item. I've got to try and work out what that's been sucked off. Slightly worrying. Now a few of you have kindly warned me this week about the dangers of these barrels collapsing under the strain of the vacuum. Clearly my barrel isn't half full yet, but I haven't seen any evidence of this so far. And in fact, when I simulate a blocked vacuum tube or maybe a full barrel by putting my hand over the end of the tube, all that happens is that the barrel lid slightly compresses under the extra strain. Maybe my 1400 watt Titan just isn't as powerful as those that you guys have been hooking up. It seems to be a very rigid construction. However, I have had at least one person say that they bought the same OIPS barrel as me and they have had this problem. So I guess I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on this for the time being. But it seems the solution that everyone has come up with is to construct some sort of wooden hoop that fits inside the barrel to strengthen it to prevent this from happening. So that's it for today. I really hope you found that useful and that you could perhaps see some benefits of this for your upcoming DIY projects. As I said, just remember that you choose your additional hose carefully to make sure it connects with whatever vacuum you're thinking of using. As I said earlier, details of all today's tools will be in the description below the video, which don't forget you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your computer by clicking on the show more button. I'm sorry for the interference at the start of this video. The weather's been appalling recently. It's gladly not raining today, but is still buffeting my pop-up workshop somewhat. So I'm off now to continue on the wardrobe build. There'll be a video on that coming up next weekend. So keep your eyes out for that. And finally, if you're new to my channel, it would be amazing to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.